just buy and start thinking you bowling, that's the problem with you not. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Let me help you out a little bit. Let's go and get into this basic portfolio management. Check it out. Malcolm Garvey, here we This takes the grill, he's back, 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 you know what I'm saying? Grid grassroot financial literacy. Let's go basic portfolio management. We got this. So we finna first go, we're gonna hit on these stocks real quick. Cause I see you buying them, but I don't think you really know what to do with them. They just sitting around. But let's go and break down stocks real quick. I don't want to take too much time. See, in general, stocks are built for long-term growth potential. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Bonds are supposed to create income stream. Now I'm gonna get into bonds after these stocks. But when you buy stock, you're now a part owner of the corporation you buying into. In most cases, unless you buy preferred stock. That's another story. Now, bond stocks makes you um, a stockholder. So when you hear that, we got to take care of the shareholders, the stockholders. That's you. Now, you may not be big enough to matter, but you, you, you still somewhere in the boat. So, it means you have a stake in the company. That means when the company does well, you do well. And if you bought AMC, oh, you know what I'm talking about. It did real well today. Now, understand, you do have voting rights. You want to learn about those. You may have to proxy in, but that's another subject. We need to get down to the two stocks you do need to be concerned with. Because I can see y'all buying expensive stock, and you better check out my first episode while I buy against that. Buy at your level. Blue chip stocks, you're going to hear this a lot. Blue chip. It's companies established that pay dividends. If you want to build a dividend portfolio, we'll cover that later. This is basics. And small cap. Those are generally more unestablished companies, but they have potential for big growth. Look, man, glad you're checking me out, man. Moving on. Got to bring it back. Now, bonds, you know what I'm saying? Bonds are generally, you know what I'm saying, making a loan to a corporation. Basically, they, you giving them, they, they got to give you like an IOU. You're a bond holder now. You know what I'm saying? This is real big with big entities, very, very big with government. Government bonds. Those are some of the most... Um, secure but now you do not share in company's profit so you don't really earn dividends off of this that's not happening but you can buy them at a good rate interest rate which is called the coupon rate uh they're based off when you buy bonds they're based off time they pay out a certain percentage based off time uh they generally go 1 5 10 15 and i think 30 you might have a 20 in there but they're used to generate passive income Bonds are really considered safe for the most part. There are times when they're not, but that's, that's far in between. But when you want to secure, when you want a secure portfolio, bonds is the way to go. More bonds over stocks. Stocks are seen more, more volatile. We'll get into that in just in a moment. Let's move on. Okay, you're back. So now we're gonna talk about funds, investment funds. The quickest way to get this down is. You know when you got when you and a couple friends get together, put money in a pot to go buy one thing. Investment funds is that on a higher, bigger scale. It's where you constantly putting money in to go buy assets. You'll see this a lot, um, especially with Fundrise, if you guys are familiar with that platform. But they invest in property instead. But it's just it's using the fund to go buy assets, uh, stocks, bonds, funds, funds, ETFs. Uh, which is exchange transfer funds, just an abbreviation, and you have uh, mutual funds and index funds. Uh, they generally safe places to put it, they diversify for you, and they're good for passive growth. But let's move on from now. Coming back to funds. Now, when you put money into a fund, they buy all the assets, and you just, you just own shares of the uh, fund itself, like stock. You can't own partial shares of a fund. That's one of the biggest differences. I don't believe you can own partial shares of stock. But don't forget, they invest, not you. You invest in them, they do the investing. That's the difference between a fund and creating your own portfolio. Look, man, when well, we finna get into this basic portfolio management, John Bogle, two fund portfolio. Now, this is very simple, you know what I'm saying? We have a 80-20 split here. This is 
recommended for you between ages 20 to 30. This is when you're gonna have the most volatile portfolio. When it's first building, you want high growth, high yield. But it's also high risk that you can weather the storm like COVID or the housing market collapse. So 80-20, 80% 80 a US-based stock index fund and 20% US bond, US-based bond index fund. Now remember, stock is more volatile than bonds. Bonds are seen as passive, stocks are seen as volatile. The reason why they choose index funds is because they diversify for you being a fund, but follow the index, because the index is known to run at about 8% average. And through the rule of 72, I cover that when I redo the video. But the rule of 72, and your money should double about every nine years. So remember that, that's the one between about 20 and ages 30. Now let's move on. Now bringing us back, now we finna get into the second one. Now this is for more, more and more older millennials. Now this is for ages 30 to 40. Now we have a 60-40 split here, right? The stocks are still at 60. You know what I'm saying? US based stock index fund. We're still following the index. Because now we have a little less time to ride out the volatility and we got the 40% US based bond index fund. Now these can be changed up, but these are how you want to allocate the portfolio as you get older. Oh, uh, let's see. Now, like I was saying, uh, you know, this is the point in life where you're starting to move up in age, should be married. Uh, let's see, some of the rat rats running around, you should have the house, the picket fence. There should be a lot more responsibility in your life now, so you have, should have less volatility. 60, 40, stocks, bonds. So this is on basic setup to start curbing some of that risk. And this is the first play in risk management that we're going to have. Now, let's move on. Now, this isn't my last one, but I feel like this is one of the most important stages of life. By 40 to 50, right? The kids are starting to be teenagers or getting ready to leave the house. Oh, let's see. You should be maybe thinking about us. Maybe refinancing, maybe getting a bigger house. Uh, depending on how you want to live, you know. This is uh, the 40-60 This is the 40, 60 split now, so we're starting to do more risk management, less volatility. We have less time. So we got 40 40% in stocks, 60% in bonds now. Cause we're looking for more passive and less risk for volatility. So this is when you should be upper mid senior level. You should be pouring in more money into investments than you ever have in your entire life. This is where you start to prepare your exit of the workforce. Now, let's get on to the last one. Oh, okay, you got me for the last one. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we're at the end here. This is uh, 50, 60, getting ready to retire. So uh, let's see, the kids should be out the house unless you got them late. One of the oops babies. I always hear about those nowadays. But um, this is where you get the uh, 20, 80 right here. You get 20% in stock, 80% in bonds. This is what we're trying to play it safe. We're dumping money in left and right trying to live our best life, right? As we leave the workforce. We ain't trying to come back. So with this said, uh, this right here is where you want to really learn the 4% rule down to a science. So you have a real mathematical understanding of how you're going to live after retirement. And you catch that in my uh, fifth video with the Black Retirement Crisis, fifth episode. But, oh, wait, stick around, I got one more for you. Bonus time, ding, 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 ding. No, we got a Warren Buffett inspired two farm portfolio. Now stay with me. Now he suggests 90% in a S&P 500 index fund. Still, we're following the index, but he wants 10% in allocation to treasury bills. Let me quickly break down the treasury bill. It's like a uh, government-based short-term bond. Uh, they come in maturities, which is when, when they finally pay out of the additional interest. Uh, 28 days is like one month, 91 days, three months, and then you have the uh, six months, and you have the one year. They, they never go above one year. They're for short term, it's for short term maximum growth. And since they're backed by the government, it seems relatively a safe way to earn short term, short term growth. Look, I ain't forget about you, I'm in crypto too. But you can uh, substitute crypto for stock. But understand, crypto is not secure like stocks and bonds are. You gotta check episode six for that. Now moving on from there. Now these are basic portfolio setups. They're suggested. Now you can always, and they don't have to be exact, but you invest at your risk tolerance level and for your goals. Now, next up we have, uh, I'm going to start doing financial reviews of nonsense financial advice that's keeping you broke. I'm also going to do the PMP next. 
the video I got it for some of my people out there asking for it. And the one I think is gonna be the budget. If you got me on the book, I'm gonna show you how I got the car. <laughs> Check me out. Free movie! Everything I do's revolutionized. I build what's good for the whole damn hood. Studies.